Hi guys, we're back here doing our back to basic videos. Today we're going to do a little, very simple little video on how to spool a reel and how to work out your top sh shot versus your backing at the bottom, etc. etc. So I recently got myself a new Penn Slammer 7500 and I thought, well, it's a good opportunity to just spool it with line and show you guys how I do it. Um, lucky I've got the spooling machine here in the shop which makes life much easier. But when you do it at home, you can do it manually. It just takes a bit longer, a little bit more effort, but it's the same process. Okay, so let's talk a bit about why we do certain things on spooling and how I'm gonna do it. So what I've got here is I've got 60 pound whiplash, uh, the whip eight, and this is 300 meters on the dot. So it's a little 300 meter top shot spool that I bought, which will become my top shot. So this is gonna be the braid that I'm gonna fish with. But I need to put a backing underneath. Um, for this specific purpose, I'm using a 75 pound spider wire. I've got 300 meters here as well. And so what I want to do is have backing on my reel. I still don't know how many meters, that's how we're gonna work at it now. But the important bit is that I want to put 300 meters of top shot. So when this top shot is damaged and I lost some and I want to replace it, all I do is just buy a 300 meter spool, put it back on the reel and it's easy. So I don't have to go take off all the braid again, work out the metrage and see how everything fits together. So I always set up my reels that every reel, I, I use a, a certain thickness, or I say thickness is a better word to use, braid. So if I'm using this 60 pound whiplash, I'll always use a braid in the same thickness on this specific reel. So the 300 meters I put on will always fill the spool to a certain level. So that's easy for me to just buy a new spool and fill it up then. So when it comes to my backing, um, we're gonna work out now how many meters we need um, and then just, as, as I said, put my top shot on top. So a lot of questions I get regarding the backing is first question is how thick should my backing be? So for me, that's a very simple um, question to answer. I always try and make my backing as thick as my top shot, or maybe a little bit thicker if you want to save on metrage. So if you've got a big reel and you know you're never ever going to use, uh, get something that's going to take 600 meters of line, you can go a bit thicker and that'll just fill the spool and give you the area to put on your, your 300 meter top shot. Um, so, Similar thickness to your top shot is the first thing. Then there are guys that really want a lot of distance on their spools. They, they want like as many meters as possible. Um, so what you'll do then, if you, for instance, got a top shot of 50 pound, but you want to get as many meters as possible out of your spool, you can maybe go a bit thinner. But you, you gotta be very careful there how thin you go compared to your top shot. So if you've got a 50 pound top shot, you can take a chance and go down to like a 40 pound backing, which will give you more meters. Um, when you start doing that, where your backing gets thinner than your top shot, what you gotta look at is your knot strength. You gotta make 100% sure that your knots are very good. Because if a fish takes line past 300 meters, it's gonna be a big fish. And the last thing you want to do is a big fish taking 300 meters line, you get your knot, you're scaling down to a thinner braid and your knot part. The second thing is, if you're scaling down to a thinner braid, make sure it's a very good quality braid. So get a very good quality thinner braid as you're backing if you're gonna take that route of going down to a thinner braid. Um, so that'll give you maybe 100 or 200 meters more on your spool. Um, and if you hook that big fish, you can let it run that far and bring it back safely. Right, so that's the basics of it. It's, it's very, very simple. For me, if my top shot is 0.18 millimeter stick, I try and do my backing 0.18 to 0.20. Very similar. So when I get a fish taking line to my knot and I am under huge pressure, I'm not scared of getting that knot through the guys running into the sea um, and putting pressure on the fish because I know it's going to hold and be strong enough and to pull that fish in um, the way I want to pull it in. All right. So the top shot and your backing uh, sorted. The next thing that's very important for me and a question I often get asked is what knot do I make on the bottom of my spool when I start spooling it? 
Um, it often happens that a fish takes you right to the end of your spool, and if you've got a very weak little knot there, it'll just pop and you'll lose all your braid. So you want a good knot down there that if a fish takes you there, and you have to hold it, and well, we don't want to get into that situation, but it might happen where a fish takes you right to the knot. You want to have enough power in that knot to hopefully turn that fish and gain your line back. Um, so the knot I'll explain as well, and that's the knot I use. There's a hundred knots out there to use tying your line to the spool, but I'll show you guys the knot I use and the knot that really works well for me. All right, so let's start the process. Um, what I'm gonna do is my 300 meter top shot, I'm gonna put on the spool first. So I'm gonna put that onto the spool, then I'm gonna take my backing, fold the reel up until the point where I'm happy it's full enough, cut the backing off, and then reverse the whole process. So take the backing off, put it at the bottom, and then put the top shot back on the top where it should be, and then we are 100% perfect. All right, so let's start the process. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a simple little knot on the bottom of the spool, show you guys the knot I use, and then put the top shot on first, the 300 meter top shot on first. All right, so the first step for me is to take the spool off the reel. And most of your local tackle shops have got a machine like this, and if you go to them, I'm sure they'll help you to spool your reel. It saves a lot of time and a lot of effort. All right, I've got my spool here, and I'm gonna place it onto the machine. Line up everything and make sure everything is nice and balanced. Tighten the spool. So, our top shot first. Put my tooth clamp there. And it's also important when you do it on the machine is get the tension on your braid correct. So make sure you've got nice tension on here. It's quite a lot of tension because you're gonna put this braid on as tight as possible. It must never ever be loose on the spool. Um, there's a few reasons for it, but the main reason for your, you're not wanting your braid loosely packed on the spool is that if you hook a big fish and you put pressure on that braid, it'll cut into the other braid and cut you off. So, this braid's gotta be on the spool nice and tight. It's gonna be like a rock hard when you tap your finger um, to ensure that it won't cut into the braid below it. So I'm setting my machine, my machine nice and tight here. And it's also important that you do it from the word go because we're gonna put all the braid on now and then swap everything around. So I'm keeping the tension the same all the way through. All right guys, so let me show you the knot I make on my spool. Um, the one that works for me and I said there's lots of other knots out there but this one I use and it, it's easy for me and I never had a problem where the knot slips or it fails on me. Alright so I take my braid and I put it around the spool once and then I go over that braid and back over the spool. So I've basically sort of just looped it over the braid I put around the spool and then I just make a uni knot. So, big uni knot on the other end. Go six times through the loop, and then I pull everything tight. And if you go more than six times, it's not a problem either, it just makes the knot stronger. And then what I do is I slide it down it nice and tight on the spool. Cut my tag end off. Right, so we're ready to go. I've got perfect tension on my top shot. And then I'm just going to wind on my 300 meters of top shot. Obviously making sure I'm winding on the right way around, else I'll have a big problem. So machine set right and I go.
here we go so that is my 300 meters of top shot on and if i press with my nail it's rock hard and that's what i want is that is on nice and firm um, next step is to grab my backing unfortunately this little spool it's got a small hole doesn't fit in my machine so i'm going to hold this in my hand um, so that old the two rags and put pressure on it Got this little tool that I'm just going to place into the spool like that. And for now, I'm just going to make a any little knot here because I'm going to take all of this off again. Let's make a little like half inch knot. We'll make a proper knot when we turn everything around. Get two rags here. The rags is just to keep pressure on this pool and put this braid on nice and tight as well. So I just put a rag on either side of this pool. Hold it nice and tight. While I'm working this with this machine, there's something I need to show you guys. For you, you've got these machines at home, and even for guys working in shops, a big mistake people do when they're full line, the way I'm doing now, holding this little spool in your hand, is they twist this spool at an angle like this, and under pressure, the braid gets cut on the spool and you damage your braid. So it's very, very important to keep everything square so the line comes off this little spool square and doesn't touch the side of these plastic spools. Um, I've had it where guys have done it, damaged the braid and they come back and they say the, the braid was faulty but it's actually the operator that fooled the reel. They had made a mistake and twisted this um, spool like this and the braid got damaged on the side of the spool. So I always concentrate when I do this and make sure I keep everything nice and square. That's it. So I've got my spool filled to the level I want it. And I'm gonna cut off the backing braid and put that one side. Okay, so that's done. Obviously this is now my, my backing, which should be at the bottom of the spool. So it's a process now of taking everything off again and just swapping it around. So I'll do that quickly and then put it on the right way so that our top shot is actually at the top of the spool. So I know this process takes long and it seems like forever with the machine it goes really fast. When you do that at home manually it takes even longer. But it takes a bit of effort now, but I promise you three or four months down the line when the change is top shot and you've worked it out properly, it's so easy. It's it's not gonna be a you don't get that scenario where you put your top shot on and there's not enough line or you're gonna waste fifty or sixty meters of your top shot. So it's a lot of effort doing it this way, but this is the best way to do it. Okay, so getting that backing off onto a spool here. Right, so there's a knot we made between our top shot and our backing. Pull that off. Take that out. Put it one side and then take off our top shot. So 
And there we go. We've got the end of the spool here. Cut a little knot we made there off. So what we're going to do now is put our backing on first and then put our top shot back on top. And then we're done. Okay, ducks, so our backing's on, 263 meters. So we've got this reel will take 563 meters of braid, which is more than enough for me for what I'm gonna use this reel for. Right, now top shot on, 300 meters of top shot. And I join my braid to braid just with a either uni knot or FG. I prefer the FG, it's obviously stronger. Um, if you do a union knot properly, it's also very strong, but the FG is the knot I use um, to join my braid to braid here. So let me do it quickly. And then I'll tie on the, I'll wind on the top shot of mine. Right, let's put that 300 meters of top shot on. Right, and there we go, it's done. So as you can see, I've got the line lay perfectly on the reel. Um, anything more than this, I'm a bit concerned about wind knots. So I always leave, this is a little bit full, um, but I, I know I'm also gonna make a few liter knots. And when I use this line, lose a, a few meters when I get stuck in the bricks and stuff like that. So it's a little bit over full for a pin reel, but with the bigger reels, you don't get that many wind knots. So it's not a big concern for me. I'm happy with that. So guys, yes, it takes a bit of time. Um, this whole process must have taken me 15 to 20 minutes on the machine. Doing this at home manually is gonna take you at least 40 minutes, but it's definitely worth the effort. Um, in the long run, you save time and you save money because you're just gonna replace your top shot every time now, your 300 meter spools you buy from the shop. Um, it's easy and quick and there's no wastage of braid when you fill up your top shot. Right guys, so really very simple, and um, as there's lots of videos out on the internet how to do it, this is my way of spooling the, the reels. It's worked for me for many, many years, and um, I'm very happy with doing it this way.